Hey, Lisa, how are you doing? I'm doing really well, thanks, Lyric. Good. It is so delightful to see your lovely face and talk to you again. It's been a while, I think, since we've been together on the same continent. Uh, yeah, Houston last year, and then we've done New Zealand together and all sorts of places together. Yeah, but a while. So it's at Houston last year, I guess. I guess that wasn't yep. so long ago. So tell me about, tell me where you are and tell me um, what things look like in the COVID pandemic environment where you are. Okay, I'm in Sydney, Australia, and um, we're in lockdown. Um, our lockdown isn't as bad as New Zealand's, um, but it's still pretty bad. Um, we, in Australia, we've been pretty good because we're an island, and it's actually much easier when you're an island to, um, to lock it down. So. Nobody's flying in or flying out. There's a few occasional flights that come in bringing Australians home. But even if they come home, they have to, um, they get put up in five-star hotels for 14 days, which sounds really nice, but I've seen the TV um, footage of it and they get their food in plastic containers and plastic cutlery and they're not even allowed out to exercise. So um, even the nice hotel rooms, I think, would wear thin after a few days. Um, but I'm really lucky. I've got a nice house, a nice studio, which is what's behind me. Um, and my husband, Peter and I just, um, do our own thing. And I, I travel a lot, as you know, and, um, I relish every bit of time I have at home. So this to me is just, um, sounds really awful, but it's really nice. <laughs> and I'm really enjoying it. I've heard a lot it. of people say that. I've heard a yeah. lot of quilt teachers just yeah, definitely. I've had um, nearly every every teaching booking for the year has been cancelled. Um, I didn't get to go to Canada for the SACWA conference or visit my son in New York. And I'm not um, going to the UK for a month teaching in June. And I'm not having an exhibition in the Netherlands. And I'm not doing a cruise down the Danube in July. Um, and, yeah, it's sort of... There's a lot of knots happening, but um, everything is, um, it's good for me. It's actually a good time to settle down. Australia has, um, where I just looked up the numbers, we have had under 7,000 um, cases confirmed, and of that, 6,000 have recovered. We've only had 97 deaths. So um, that's pretty amazing. Um, the shocking one that we've got at the moment is there's a retirement home um, where one of the staff members went and did six shifts not knowing that she was ill and um, has infected the whole place. And so far, I think they're up to 16 or 17 deaths of the residents. That's happening. It's really, the really depressing because it's just one little cluster. Um, and I have a 91-year-old mum. In, in a retirement home and um, they're being so strict it's not funny um, so I have actually seen her once um, they've set up some very sort of four people to a ginormous room with tables and chairs and barriers and we had 20 minutes and we had to prove that we would had flu injections and that we didn't have the virus and and all that stuff um, but yeah apart from that I'm just talking to her every day and um, but it's really scary. It's um, it's not a nice place to be wherever you are, even if you're in a nice environment, I think. Because you don't know what's around the corner and you don't know when it's going to finish. Right, right. We've had um, nursing home complete infections all over the place here. Not just one, just mm. home after home after home. Um, yep. So it's... Oh, you're right. It's really, really not good. One of my good friends is her mother died in a home just like that, where 100% of the residents were infected. Yeah, they're so. so weak. You know, they don't have any um, any resilience against it. Um, right. But and we still love them. I mean, they still want to live. We, they still have so much to offer. You know, yes. So. Yeah. So. Um, I think the scariest thing for me, and it really hit home yesterday, because I think something in the back of my head, 
I guess because this year's been written off for me and I'm not looking beyond that. I just assume everything's going to be okay Mm -hmm. come 2021. Um, And it actually, I was listening to somebody on the radio and they were talking about memories with their grandmother and their grandmother was talking about the time during World War. And the World Wars went on for years. Mm. And, and like, I'm sort of mentally thinking, yes, this is going to be over, you know, come January, all is going to be fine. But it might not be. And it might go on for years. And um, I think all our lives are definitely changing. And, you know, I just, I'm just taking each day as it comes, really. I've, yeah. I have three quilts due for, for deadlines and two of them are for a show that was in July, that was moved to August, that's now moved to November. Um, so I have plenty of time to do them, and I'm not even sure the shows will be in November. So, yeah. right. Well, if your island stays insular for that long, and you guys yeah. are able to get the cases down to zero, it might be okay. We might be. We might be. But um, there's but no international travel. Um, I mean... New Zealand's just, um, we call it across the pond. It's just a three-hour flight. It's actually quicker to get to New Zealand than to get to Perth on the other side of Australia. Um, And they're just talking about possibly um, opening up Australian-New Zealand flights um, in July. Um, Mm -hmm. I am supposed to be over on your side of the planet um, in October. Um, but I'm just not sure whether it's going to happen. And even if it is going to happen, is it where I really want to be? Well, and you don't know if flight restrictions are going to be lifted from Australia yeah. or New Zealand. Yeah. yeah. You know, everybody is in such a, a hard place and we have to start being, unco- start being comfortable with not knowing because we yeah. can't predict. We can't see. I know the shows are just in a bind i mean there's yes. there's nothing they can do like some of the larger shows can't cancel too far ahead unless um i mean without losing everything um, they have to wait in in the states contracts and insurance don't kick in until the state shuts the thing down so that they're yeah. forced to if they choose to shut it down they lose everything um mm. so it's it's such a it's such a dilemma here. You know, I guess I feel really grateful that I have a choice of whether I show up or not. Um, and yep. pretty much all my gigs yep. have been cancelled, or I chose to cancel them as well, um, just because I don't see any safe way. It just Indeed. I teach so hands on with shared supplies with everybody in each other's space and. And most of the stuff I teach, there's no way not to do that. um, Exactly. Um, So, yeah. So anyway, are you, so mentally you're feeling good though? It's kind of like a nice Um, treat. Yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm sort of trying to work out what to do if this goes on for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I have some ebooks that people are thank you very much kindly buying. Um, I I do little YouTube videos and stuff, but I think I need to set up proper online courses. Um, yeah. And I'm doing lots of research. It's fascinating. Um, the world of <laughs> social media is like oh, oh my god. Um, so and much so, yeah. going on, right? I'm yeah. I've spent the last week learning. Um, you know, Zoom, I'm very comfortable with doing this, but I'm learning yep. all these other ways, plus Zoom, that I can do what I think are going to be really amazing online experiences. And they're live, but they're virtual. Um, and yep. I think sometimes they might have advantages, even to a live class. Yeah, I, I think you could be right. I mean, you know, it's just, you, you know, only too well what it's like dragging six suitcases through airports and missing your flights because the gates at the other end of the airport, um, et cetera. Um, and it's like, Oh, maybe I won't have to leave home. And, um, you know, I, I'm older than you are. Um, and I 
yeah, I don't have the tiny, tiny at home. <laughs> Oh, okay. But um, I know you still have you still have kids at home for a while. Yeah. Um, but you know, the travel is very weary, 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 weary no, tiring. I'll say tiring, <laughs> weary, weary. Yeah. Um, and yeah. So I mean, as much as I love it, you know, is my old body sort of saying, okay, maybe this is a really good time to slow down and and look at other options. And um, it could be. There's a lot happening out there and people are being really creative. I mean, um, as you know, I was the president of SACWA until the conference that didn't happen in, um, in Canada. And we only decided two weeks before the conference um, to, to do it virtually on Zoom. And it was really interesting because we've been talking about doing it for um, ages and it was great. It just, it just went so well. I was so floored that in two weeks you guys could pull off such an amazing event virtually. And I know it's it's not the same, of course, but I can't even fathom the amount of work that you guys did during those two weeks. It must have been around the clock, no sleep, everybody scrambling to get it figured out. And you did it, and it was amazing. It was. It was absolutely amazing. I did not have to work that hard, but um, absolute kudos to um, to the staff and to the organising committees. They they really did. And I think we always put something, even like having just the presentations on, on recorded, um, in the too hard basket. And to be forced to do it, um, it was it was incredible. And um, I've noticed now since because I'm not privy to all the background stuff now which is really frustrating because I'm a very nosy person (laughs) so Um, much fun to know yeah but they're doing so many really cool things and um there was a 3d presentation the other day um that they got 500 people attended on zoom it was like that's just amazing um and so if people don't know what we're talking about um studio art courts associates sacwa.com um, check it out because um, if you like lyrics work, if you like my work, um, you need to be SACWA members. Yeah, it's a, it's a fabulous worldwide organization. And I'll be putting all these links right here in the video. So great. We'll get those in. Um, yep. And um, coming up in a couple of weeks, I'll be talking to Deborah Boschert, who is the new SACWA president. Right. And right. we'll get She's... her inside. Maybe we'll get some behind the scenes, figure out what's going on. <laughs> Um, yeah she's lovely she's wonderful she is absolutely delightful and sacra couldn't be in better hands so um i I was just really lucky that um she was there i didn't have to worry my whole presidency about you know who could i find to replace me yeah because deborah was there as my vice president so that was i was very fortunate good so are you working on anything during this downtime I am. I um, as I, as I mentioned before, I have two quilts due for this major quilt show. Um, but I also belong to a group called Cloth in Common, mm, and I we're an uh, international group of twelve of us. And um, you spoke to Catherine McDonald in New Zealand. She's a member, and um, we're all over the world. We're in Korea, in Japan, and the Netherlands, and Germany, and the US, and I hope I haven't forgotten anywhere. Um, and we have a challenge every two months. And normally I think about the challenge for about four to six weeks and then I do it in a rush. Um, so it's due at the end of this month. And um, yesterday I made a Thermofax screen um, because... I wonder what that's... you're working on. <laughs> Look yeah, exactly. The, um, the theme this time, or the prompt we call them, is um, cooperation and sharing. Um, and so my quilt is obviously bit, bits of the virus um, are going to appear in my quilt. So, um, yeah, it's really it's, um, fun. I've been printing lots of fabric and, um, and getting that ready. And um, I've also been trying to sort of film little bits of whatever I'm doing to try and turn into little YouTube videos and stuff. So um, (laughs) I just potter around. Um, So that's sort of where my creative um, thing is. 
And the other thing is that a few years ago, I wrote a book. Um, it was quite a big book. I had about 10 projects in it and um, I spent a year on it. And then right at the end of the publishing process, they decided not to print it. And so I actually have um, the text. Oh, I know, I know. Tell me about it. It was just um, a shocker. But I'm over it now. It's a few years ago. Um, and so I'm looking at turning that into a series of online workshops because um, there were 10 different projects in the book and I think they'll make really, really cool online project things. So um, I'm looking at that as a big project, um, but I'm not quite there yet. I can't quite work out how to convert hundreds of photos and... Um, and 98 pages of text into um into it's a lot of work but it's a lot it is of a work. lot of work i've done and i'm not sure whether i want to sort of repre like remake projects right etc so that's that's in the back of my head yeah people don't understand sometimes how much work it is to take something you do live or something you've written and turn it into video. I mean, when you're, when you're doing video, you need lighting equipment. You might need camera booms. You need the recording equipment to start with. You might need sound equipment. And then there's the whole editing process that's, that can be quite a learning curve, but it can be done. I know yeah. you can do it. It can be done. I know you've done it and you've done it brilliantly. Um, I, it's a big project, but I'm thinking um, that's that's an end goal. I think I don't think um, I'm not going to jump straight into that. I'm, as I said, I'm doing lots of research on all sorts of things, and um, I think I'll take little steps first, mm -hmm. and then there'll come a point where I'll go, okay, now I need to approach this as a project, and I suspect I'll have a lot of time to um, to work on it. Think about it for as long as you want, and then you'll have lots of time to work on it. I'm, I'm curious. I have a question about Australia in lockdown. I saw this absolutely delightful um, series of photos, an article of Australians dressing up in ridiculous costumes to take out their garbage bins, because apparently that mm. was the only place, the only time they could go out of their house during super tight lockdown. And I was like... I love these people. I knew I loved these people, but now I really love these people. And I might have to dress up in something ridiculous to take a walk around my neighborhood sometime. I know. Look, I think, I think it was really cute. Um, Peter takes our rubbish out. It's the um, highlight of his Mondays. Um, but I can't convince him to go out in his underwear or anything. Um, <laughs> take do Australians do that too? <laughs> um, so, yeah, what, what, I've done this because we weren't allowed out. Um, well, we sort of were allowed out. We, we were allowed to go out to the shops to do grocery shopping and doctors and stuff like that. I found um, I live in a fairly small residential area and people, lots of people were walking. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I thought I was, I think I got the idea from somebody on Facebook that um, she hung a quilt out every day. And so I said to Pete, I want to hang a quilt out every day. So he, he set up a, a hanging rig for me because I've got a veranda mm -hmm. that's um, I can check out from my studio just in case someone wants to jump over the fence and, and <laughs> rip off my quilt. Um, and so I've been doing that and I uh, have it on Instagram. I just um, isol isolation quilt show, hashtag isolation quilt show. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been putting that and, it's really interesting because I put it on my Instagram feed and I put it on my Facebook page because I do a jigsaw puzzle every morning. I post a jigsaw puzzle of something on my Facebook page every morning. So mm -hmm. I've been putting that on. And I also, our local group has a Facebook page. So I put it on that and I get lots of comments and how wonderful. <laughs> but I watch people when they walk past and nobody looks. <laughs> It's do you really have weird. a neighborhood email page? Do they do they know it's out there? Yeah, yeah. I put it on there, and I get comments. And a few people said, "Oh, yes, look, I, I love driving past and seeing your quilt. It's a little tiny one way street." But I do. I watch people as they walk past, and they just walk past, and they don't even like. We're only talking like two or three feet from the street, mm. and they don't. 
one person actually has stopped when I went out and they said, oh, I really like your quilts. But I'm thinking, look at my quilt. Go on, look at them. But <laughs> the, um, the side effect from that is that um, I never sell my quilts. I've sold one big, two big ones in my, my quilting career. Um, and I've sold four quilts. Oh, that's amazing. From doing this. That is wonderful. Congratulations. I know it's amazing. Um, it's not, got my wheels not to the neighbors. Trying to figure out where I can hang quilts in my yard. <laughs> yeah, but it's not. It's not the neighbors. Mm -hmm. It's people that one's going to Tasmania, to one's going to Canberra. Um, I, I was just blown away, and that's just like because I have no income at the moment, and um, and so it's like, oh my god, these these quilts have just been sort of sitting wrapped up in a cupboard and they're going to go to new forever homes and that's just so exciting so that i'm is. really thrilled about that so. that's fabulous yeah our homes are pretty far back off the street mm. so i'm deciding if i could i think i can figure out a way to hang it by my front door but i don't know if i want it far out in the yard you, you need to be able to just check on it like i'm sort of in my studio most of the time so i just mm -hmm. sort of go oh yeah it's still there it's still there um, but and my uh, husband yeah. works right by the front window, so he's looking outside all day. So it could happen. This You've given me ideas. The wheels are going. I think that would be fabulous. Well, I'm so excited. I mean, it's all about sharing, isn't it? And um, it's it's been great, actually. Um, I've been really. Um, in fact, this I sold one yesterday, and um, I was so excited. I rang my mother and told her, and. Um, <laughs> Uh, the other thing that I've done um, until the end of the month, I I've been giving away one of my patterns mm -hmm. and it's on my website. Um, and it's a pattern that it's just been hanging around for many years. Um, and I just thought, I think I'll just give it away. Um, I've had over 2000 downloads of it. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I've got, I've got a, I wish I'd, I wish I'd charge a dollar each. <laughs> that would have been nice. Um, yeah. Missed opportunity. Never too late. You could start. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> but um, I set up a Facebook page for people making the quilts, and there's already been about half a dozen quilts completed. Oh, and these are big quilts. That's um, and that was so, so fun. And um, that was, you know, absolutely no skin off my nose, if that's an expression in New Year's, I don't yes. know. Um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was just, and it's pop, pop, pop. And this morning, because I did a newsletter yesterday and mentioned it again, so it's on till the end of the month. And um, I just looked and it was an order for, you know, the zero dollars um, for this pattern. And then I looked down and she'd bought yesterday's quilt as well. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm so excited. That paid for it. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, well, That's awesome. we'll definitely at the end of the video put that link into this, um, into this video. And my website can go berserk again. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we would love that. It would be great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Lisa, it has been wonderful and fantastic and beautiful to talk to you and to have a moment to catch up with you and see what you're doing. It's always lovely to talk to you, Lyric. I hope we get to talk in person someday we soon. We okay. will. We'll make it happen at some point. We will. All right. Okay. I love Take you. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.